In our last lecture recording, we gave an intro to operations and supply chain and productivity. And we talked about the importance in an organization about the operations management function. We're taking a lot of various inputs, whether it's something that we're producing internally or buying through the supply chain, and we're adding value to those inputs to make them an output. So there is a process there, that production process of transforming our inputs into an output. Those outputs can either be a good or a service. And so it's important to just quickly highlight the differences between goods and services and so that we understand um, in an operations management function um, how we can tailor our operations to support either creating a, a high quality product or a high quality service. So that's why we are going to review the differences between goods and services now. So a good is a physical product that you can see, touch, or possibly consume. Durable goods are a product that typically lasts at least three years, and a non-durable good is a perishable product, and it generally lasts for less than three years. Um, it, whether something falls into a durable good or a non-durable good is sometimes debatable, right? When you're right around that three-year mark, you know, is a phone a durable good or a non-durable good? Or a bicycle is a durable good or non-durable good? It's a little bit debatable, right? Because it depends on the wear and tear uh, that you have for that product. But when you think of durable goods, think of things that are going to last you for a while. A home, a vehicle, a dishwasher, furniture. Those are all durable goods because they, they're going to last for the long term. Non-durable goods that only last a couple years or even maybe just a couple days or weeks um, could be, you know, flowers, uh, television, uh, shoes, things like that, clothing. Uh, those aren't going to last as long and they might last less than three years. So that's the difference between a durable good and a non-durable good. The tenure of how long that product is going to last. A service is any activity that does not directly produce a physical product. So that could be an oil change, a haircut, um, uh, this course, right? Uh, these are all services because it's not directly producing a physical product. A service encounter is any interaction between the customer and the service provider. So many times you guys and myself included are customers when we go to get a service performed. Um, whether it's again a haircut, oil change, or even San Diego State, that is the service provider. They are providing us with a service. Service encounters consist of one or more moments of truth in which the customer comes into contact with any aspect of the delivery system and therefore has an opportunity to form an impression form and impression. Um, I use the word judging, right? We are constantly judging whether or not a service is meeting our expectations. I just got my, uh, my oil changed a, a couple days ago, right? And they met my expectations through various moments of truth when they, when they performed a high quality service for me. They were friendly. They were on time. They got me in quick. They didn't try and upsell me too much on products or services that I didn't need. Uh, they were very thorough. The price was fair and they gave me a coupon that I didn't ask for. So there was a lot of moments of truth where I was constantly judging their performance and they met my expectations. You guys are doing the same thing right now, right? You're judging me. You're determining whether or not uh, you like this course and you like this instructor and uh, you know what you think you're going to you know get over the course of the next couple of months with us together. So um, constantly services are being judged and there are many opportunities to um, meet or exceed or fail our customer expectations through those moments of truth. So there's some similarities between goods and services. Goods and services both provide value and satisfaction to customers who purchase them. So whether it's a product that you bring home, something tangible that you touch on a daily basis, or whether it's a service, um, as a customer, you want there to be the value that you're expecting for that good or for that service. Both goods and services can be standardized and customized to individual wants and needs. So during a production process, which is that transformation of creating the goods and the services, taking all those inputs to create the outputs, you can put processes in place. You can create standard processes to make sure that the output is good every single time. For products, it's pretty straightforward. You know that a lot of the products that we buy whether it's a car or an iPhone or these computers, they have very strict processes in place to make the same product every single time, the same output every single time. If I go buy a Toyota Tacoma 
in New York or a Toyota Tacoma in California, I know it's going to be exactly the same product uh, unless it's customized a little bit to meet the customer wants and needs. But for the most part, that product's going to be exactly the same. iPhones are the same all around the world. So those products follow a process so that the output is the same every single time. Services try to do the same exact thing. They don't want variability in those processes, so they're adding checklists, polka yokes, which we'll go over uh, in, in uh, the chapter in Lean uh, in JIT. But we want to have our service processes produce the same kind of output every single time so that there's not variability in the output of that product. There's some differences between goods and services. Goods are tangible while services are intangible. Sometimes services will have a little bit of a tangible product, but generally um, speaking, generally speaking, goods are tangible while services are intangible. Goods are consumed and services are experienced. Um, many times customers participate in service processes, activities, and transactions. So if you think about, let's just um, use haircut as an example again. Uh, they can't, me the customer, I have to participate in that process. Uh, as part of that transformation from the input to the output. If I'm not there, they can't cut my hair. So I am definitely part of that process. Um, and so that's one of the differences between a good and a service. Um, when they're making my iPhone, I'm not there in Shanghai watching them on the, on the pr production uh, assembly line, right? They're producing it uh, and I only see the finished product. I am not part of that service process. Um, the demand for services is more difficult to, to predict than the demand for goods. Uh, that's because you can uh, just historically forecast seasonality. You can um, uh, survey customers uh, for products, so you can generally get a better forecast uh, for goods than you can for services, especially because goods generally have a uh, shelf life. So they know every three to four years, I'm going to be buying a new iPhone. They know that every five to six years, I'm probably going to be getting a new car. And so uh, they can build in those forecasts for goods a little easier than they can for services. Services cannot be stored as physical inventory. That's you know, pretty straightforward, a little bit obvious there, right? I, when I go to get my oil changed, there's nothing in stock except for the oil there. So um, that is not something they keep in stock. That's a service they're performing for me. Same thing for a haircut. They, there's nothing in inventory except for the hair products. They can't perform that service on my hair unless I show up. So there is no finished good in, in inventory uh, for services. Service management skills are paramount to a successful service encounter. That's kind of what I was talking about with those moments of truth. You must have high quality um, uh, customer service uh, in those services. Otherwise, people will not come back. Um, if I'm going to buy an iPhone and the person is rude to me, I'm still going to buy the iPhone, right? Because I know it's a product. I'm going to have it for years. And unfortunately, I'm just going to have a bad experience, but I'm still going to buy the product. If I go to get a haircut and uh, the person is a jerk, uh, then I'm not going to go back to that facility. I'm just going to go to a different one that's nearby. Uh, because I did not have a good service encounter. Service facilities typically need to be in close proximity to the customer. Uh, so again, my iPhone is made overseas. Uh, the cars that I buy are, are not made here in San Diego. Uh, so it does not matter to me where those goods are produced. But with a service facility, whether I'm getting my oil changed or my haircut, it better be close to my home because I'm going to go somewhere close because it, it takes me that amount of time uh, and time is precious. So I'm going to do something quick and easy uh, for my services. And then last but not least, one of the differences between goods and services is that patents protect goods. They do not protect services. So make sure if you are designing a service or you have some kind of restaurant or idea that if it is a service, you get out to market quickly uh, because um, uh, you, patents do not protect service ideas or service uh, industries. Okay, some examples of goods and services content and how uh, they uh, fall within uh, either high goods contents or, or low goods content. You can see on the far left of this screen that when things are high in goods content, they are very tangible, they appear good, whether it's a house or a car or a bicycle, that would be to the far left because it's good, high in goods content, very durable good. Uh, and on the far right would be low goods content. These are things that are intangible, uh, more pure services. If you go to see a counselor, you're not leaving with anything uh, tangible, right? You're going and you're just talking. If you go to a symphony or a play, you're going and you're experiencing that music, but unless you buy a souvenir, you're just leaving with that experience. So that's on the far right. Most of the things we buy um, fall somewhere in that middle where there is some goods content um, and there's a little bit of a service as well. 
And so uh, those are right there in the middle of um, uh, this continuum here. Okay, let's quickly talk about goods quality. Goods quality. So quality is the degree to which the output of a process meets customer requirements. So I'll say that again. Quality is the degree to which the output of a process meets customer requirements. We as the customer, is it meeting our expectations for what we're receiving? Well, with goods quality, the physical performance and characteristics are of a good are what we're judging. Is it meeting our expectations? Does that good perform as we expect it? So there's a few things we look at for goods quality. The performance, the features, the reliability, the conformance, durability, uh, serviceability, aesthetics. These are all things we take into consideration when looking at the, the goods quality. Is it meeting our performance characteristics for that item? If you think about, uh, I'll use a, a Toyota Tacoma as an example because that's what I have. Um, the features, right? I know what the features are, the bells and whistles. When I go and I look at it on the lot, I know exactly what I'm going to get. Uh, the stereo system, the, whether it's a, a cloth or leather, um, what size engine. I know the features that I'm going to get prior to making that purchase. The reliability. Um, a lot of that, um, for years I had Ford Rangers before I, I purchased Toyota Tacomas, and the reliability is everything that people said it was. You know, when people say, hey, with the Toyota Tacoma, you just put oil and gas in the thing and call it a day, and it'll last you for 10 years. Well, that's been my experience with my Toyota Tacomas. Um, it's been very low maintenance, which I love, very reliable. Uh, the durability, right? The amount of use that one gets from a good before it deteriorates. Um, I, I got in two car accidents. I got rear-ended twice in, in my last Tacoma, and I got more hurt than, than my car did. So very durable. Um, and so just, you know, aesthetics, I thought they looked great. Uh, so with goods quality, you know what you're getting generally up front, but you're, you're measuring and you're constantly measuring does the physical performance and the characteristics of that good meet my expectations? You can see by my glowing reviews, the Toyota Tacoma did, right? Um, I knew exactly what I was getting and it met my expectations. With service quality, it's a little more complicated. With service quality, is someone, is, is a service organization consistently meeting or exceeding customer expectations and the service delivery system performance for our service encounters? Are they meeting my needs? Um, consistently. And consistently is kind of the key word there. If you were to go get your haircut and one time they do a great job and the next time you go back and they don't, you're going to think twice about whether or not you want to go there. So for service quality, we judge the, the tangibles, the reliability, the responsiveness, the assurance, and the empathy. So just continuing on talking about haircuts, the tangibles. Is the facility clean? Do they have a you know TV playing? Do they give me water when I arrive? Are they all wearing uniforms uh, and you know their shirts are tucked in and they look professional, right? These are the tangibles that we judge with a service quality. The reliability. Um, I, I want to make sure that I'm getting a good haircut every single time. If there's variability in that process and sometimes it's great and sometimes it's terrible, I'm not going to go back to that same place. Responsiveness. Do they have long wait times or do they get me in quickly? And empathy is, um, you know, they try to get to know me. They try and uh, understand the service that I want to receive. You know, what's my haircut like? And, um, you know, being friendly with me so that I will come back. So it's harder uh, for a service organization to consistently meet or exceed customer ex expectations. But that's why they work so hard to put operational processes in place to remove that variability and meet our customer expectations. All right, when we talk about the quality of goods and services, there's three types of attributes um, to evaluate the quality of goods and services. These are search attributes, experience attributes, and credence attributes. Search attributes are those things that a customer can determine prior to purchasing the good or the service. An example of that would be if I was looking for a place to uh, rent near San Diego State, I could look at how many bedrooms I wanted, and, you know, how many bathrooms, what kind of square footage there was. Um, these are all search attributes that I can do prior to purchasing uh, a good or a service. Experience attributes are those attributes that can only be discerned after something is consumed or used. So an example would be if, if I tell you how wonderful uh, Hawaii is because uh, you know we've been there a couple times, we got married there, whatever it may be. Um, unless you go, you're not going to believe me. Uh, and hopefully you have the same experience that we've had and that you love it too. 
But people don't always have the same experiences. So sometimes it, it might not go well for them. But those are, um, you can only discern how your experience is after you've uh, performed that service. Credence attributes are any aspect of a good or service that the customer must believe in, but cannot personally evaluate even after purchase or consumption. That one sounds a little funny, right? A credence attribute is something you've got to believe in. Here's two examples. One would be, I recently got a will done for my family, right? And I don't know if that will's any good because no one in my family's died yet, thankfully. So was that will set up correctly? I don't know because we didn't double check their work. My, um, the individual who does my, uh, my taxes for me, my accountant, I've never had her work checked. So I don't know if she's actually doing good work for me or not. I just believe that she is. You know, if I get a couple hundred bucks back in my taxes, I don't know if another accountant could have helped me get a couple thousand dollars back because I'm not checking her work. So I believe that she's doing a good job, but I don't actually know. So these are credence attributes. So when we evaluate the quality of services, so let's talk about services real quick. Customers evaluate services in ways that are often different from goods and such that customers seek and rely more information from personal sources than from non-personal sources when evaluating services prior to purchase. We listen to our friends, okay? Yelp is good and online reviews are helpful, but online reviews give you the extremes people who hate the place or people who love the place. So you've got to take that information with a grain of salt. We, as customers, when we're evaluating the quality of services, we rely on our, our personal sources, our friends, for their recommendations. Customers use a wide variety of perceptual features in evaluating services, and customers normally adopt innovations in services more slowly than they adopt in innovations in goods. So, you know, when we think about that one, uh, adopting slowly, I'll just keep using haircut as an example. My wife used to get her haircut from a lady and, and the lady did an okay job. Not great, okay. My wife wasn't thrilled with the service, but she was too nervous to go to someone else because she didn't know how their service would be performed. Would she like it better or would she like it worse? What if they did a worse job? So she just for years would ask her friends who they were using and then she would eventually made the switch to a different hairstylist and now she's happy with the person she goes to but it took her a long time to work up the courage to change over who she was getting that service performed with and part of that reason is is the next line customers perceive greater risk when buying services than when buying goods so that's why it's important and difficult um, to design services and service processes um, because our service processes um, uh, are difficult. So we have to put standard processes in place so that we can have uh, consistent, high quality services um, that we output to our customers. Okay, there's the goods services continuum. This is a little bit like uh, the slide we saw a, a little while ago. On the far left is things that are uh, high in goods content. Those are easier for us to evaluate. And that's clothing, jewelry, furniture, housing. They're high in search attributes. So like the car I was talking about, I knew exactly what I was looking for with my Tacoma. It's a high-end goods content. It was easy to, for me to evaluate uh, my, the, the, the good that I was buying. On the far right, things that are high-end services content, they're more difficult to evaluate, and they are high-end credence attributes. So estate planning, uh, my accountant, those are true services. They are more difficult for me to evaluate because um, they are high-end credence attributes. And then in the middle is uh, things where there is a combination of goods and services content. Um, and they're right there in the middle for us to evaluate because after we've experienced them, we can then understand um, whether or not they met our expectations. So did a restaurant or a vacation or a haircut meet our expectations? All right, this last slide, um, which kind of highlights some of the characteristics of goods and services we've already touched upon in some of the previous uh, slides. And you don't need to know all of these. You don't need to memorize them for your uh, exam, but you do need to understand the concept and how goods and services differ. And so just a couple examples from this slide would be, you know, goods uh, labor content. So uh, using the iPhone as an example, uh, a lot of that is automated. It's done on machines, and therefore the output uh, is the same every single time because there's there's not going to be any variability. There's a low labor content uh, for a lot of the goods that we procure. 
The flip side of that is with a service, it's very high in labor content. When I go to get my haircut, there is a person there waiting to perform that service on me, and it is a one-for-one -one labor content. There's one hairstylist, and then there's me. So it's a high labor content. Uh, uniformity of, of the inputs and outputs uh, for goods, it's high, right? So the uniformity of the inputs, they're buying the same exact raw materials every single time, and the outputs are the same every single time. With the service, it's the opposite of that. Think about a hairstylist, for instance. Every single person that comes to see that hairstylist is different. So their, their input is different every single time. And then every haircut essentially is a custom order. It's a custom job for that person. So the uniformity of that output is different every single time. So those are some of the differences between you know, goods and services. Inventory, I talked about that one earlier. With goods, whether it's a phone or a car or t-shirts, uh, they're going to be in inventory, but for services, you can't do that. So those are some of the differences between goods and services. You really need to understand the concept of how they vary, uh, but you do not have, need to have this uh, information memorized.